Hello, all of you meet the ball. Today, I am bringing you a recipe that has been a secret family recipe for all of these years. I am finally making meatballs on the channel. This is a recipe I've made over and over and over, over the decades, but today, I'm revealing all of the secrets. I've got the recipe codified. It's the best batch of meatballs I ever made. I'm gonna make them this way from now on, and I hope that you will too. Secret bonus, it comes with its own marinara sauce. This is kind of like getting two recipes in one. I cannot wait, we're finally making meatballs. Before I dive into those meatballs, I wanna give a special thanks and shout out to WeWork for sponsoring today's episode. Their WeWork All Access Membership, which now starts at a special introductory price, is a great way for atypical office types like you and me to find a place to work near home or around the world. Coffee, tea, Wi-Fi, good vibes, and comfy chairs are all included. Are you someone who needs a great space to work while traveling? Click the link in the episode description to try WeWork All Access for yourself. Starting at a special introductory price, terms apply. Now let's get back to those balls. The process for making the meatballs is a little involved, right? You have to make the mix, you gotta roll the balls, you gotta brown them, you gotta do the whole thing. So the marinara that I make to go with these is like dead simple. So there's very few ingredients. The sauce has to be delicious on its own, but it's also the cooking medium for the meatballs later. So its flavor is also gonna be transformed at the end with the addition of the actual meatballs. So it's gonna taste good, no balls. It's gonna get even better with balls. So this is going into a pan over medium high. In this bowl, I have a large onion and 10 cloves of garlic. The first step is just sweating this all out together. Because of all the moisture from the onion, this is gonna look like pretty wet at the beginning. So we're just gonna cook off all of that moisture. So I'm just seasoning with salt and peps. So usually when it's like meatball making day, you just wanna get the sauce on the stove and have that going in the background so that it gets a head start and is well on its way by the time it meets up with the balls because everybody should be their like fully formed self before they form another union. A perfect union, you might say. At about the 10 minute mark, what I'm noticing now in the pan is that most of that liquid has been cooked off. The veg is gonna start to sizzle in the fat that's left behind. I'm gonna go a few minutes longer until I start to see the beginning of some browning. Starting to see some browning right at the bottom as I scrape up and the veg is just starting to stick a tiny bit. I'm gonna remove what I need for the meatball mix. I'm not gonna measure this, I'm just eyeballing about half of the mixture. And this is one of the newest, I would say, and biggest changes that I've made to the meatball recipe that I've been making is to actually use cooked vegetables instead of raw onion and garlic to season the meatball mix because they have a ton of flavor, they're really tender, all of their sweetness has been brought out. So this brings a lot more to the meatball party. To the mixture that's left, I'm going to add a little bit of wine. You can just use a little bit of water to deglaze the pan so the wine is totally optional. And I just want to evaporate that a bit. Before I actually add the tomatoes, I'm going to pour off some of the liquid. This isn't really a technique, but removing the tomato liquid is going to make it possible for me to hit, stick a hand blender into these cans. And I'm going to add the tomato liquid. This also sort of conveniently slows things down now that the wine is evaporated so that while I'm blending the tomatoes, I don't have to worry about this going too far or burning. I'm blending them because I don't actually want chunks of tomato in this sauce. That's just a personal preference. Like for me, the meatballs bring the texture and have enough going on. I also had a child who at the time really didn't like sauce that had hunks of tomato. So it's just something that like over time is just the way that we do it. The last thing I'm going to do is just rinse out these two cans to get all of that little bits of tomato that are stuck. So about halfway up with both of them and add the water to the marinara. If when you went um, freezer diving for your dregs of white wine, you found a parm rind that you should definitely be freezing, please add that to the pot as well. 
and this is it for the marinara. So now I'm gonna partially cover this pot and let that go while I do my meatball process and then they will catch up at the perfect time. Small handful of parsley. In this bowl, I already have a pound of ground beef chuck. So you wanna look for something that's 80% lean, 20% fat with one pound of ground pork. You want your total weight to be two pounds. So this should measure around a quarter cup, but it's, it's, it's really all good if it's a nice handful. Here's my cooked veg, the onion, garlic, olive oil, salt, pepper. The beauty of this is that you're not gonna detect like a raw onion or raw garlic bits in the meatball. I've also got two large eggs. Eggs are important as a binder, but the other important thing for the meatball mix is moisture. So you don't want something that's like bound really tight because then you're gonna have tough balls and nobody wants tough balls. But if it's too wet, you're not gonna be able to form them. They're gonna be too loosey goosey. So it's about finding that balance to also help not only with binding but with texture i'm using panko breadcrumbs the reason that there's breadcrumbs in the mix is because the breadcrumb is gonna kind of combine completely homogeneously with the meat and having those bits of bread throughout is going to interrupt the protein strands of the meat from like making long chains with shorter little chains of protein that tighten up, you're going to get a more tender ball. So it's all about the tender, the tender ball. All right. So I've also got a full teaspoon of red chili flake, a teaspoon of garlic powder. So we've got garlic two ways. They don't overlap each other. They accentuate each other. I'm putting a full two teaspoons of dry oregano in here as well. I've got grated parm and two teaspoons of salt. So this is my usual teaspoon per pound of protein. So two pounds of ground meats, two teaspoons of salt. I'm also adding a quarter cup or two ounces of extra virgin olive oil. This is gonna enrich the meatballs. It helps with the loosely held together texture and it just flavors them, makes them incredibly delicious. And even though there's red pepper, I'm gonna add a little bit of black as well. The goal here with mixing is you want really a homogenous mixture. If you wanna get in there with your hands, you can do that. But I find a wooden spoon is also a good tool. Listen, don't get mad at me. I'm doing this in a more shallow bowl than I normally would because I want you guys to see inside. You're looking to thoroughly combine, absolutely homogenous, everything evenly combined, but don't squeeze the balls. We don't want like a super tight texture because again, that will lead to toughness. There should be no like clump of cheese anywhere. You should not see that, oh, that's pork meat over there, that's beef over there, like everything really coming together without being compacted because when you compact them that's when they'll end up tough this looks thoroughly combined to me everything is evenly dispersed i'm very happy with the mixture the next thing i have to do is fry off a test patty and then we'll be able to form the balls very important to make a test patty this is really your only opportunity to make sure that the meatball itself is seasoned properly before it is over you've browned them and then they go into the sauce like you're not going to have another opportunity to check the seasoning she's a sizzling and i made it a patty instead of a ball so it'll cook faster so this is a, a technical scooby snack it's the scooby snack for the chef that is also essential you have to do it it's cheesy it's perfect we're good to go the best time of day is ball formation time of day. I've got a rim baking sheet. I'm gonna throw a little oil on there. And then I'm just gonna put my hands into the pan, get a thin layer of oil everywhere. And then with the oil that's on my hands, this is gonna make it easier for me to form the balls without the meat sticking. You can make your balls as big or as small as you want, but in the recipe, I am going for about a two ounce ball. They will expand a bit as they cook. 
listen, they're gonna be round now and they're gonna get flat when you brown them. I have not figured out a way to keep the ball round when it's being browned. If someone knows the trick to that, please let me know. This is about an average ball size and I'm not looking for bigger balls than that. This is as big a ball as we need. He's got big balls. You know what I mean? That's what I want people to say about me. The last ball is either gonna be like a little bit bigger than all the other balls or a little bit smaller. And in this case, I got a big ball on my hands. <laughs> Gross, Carla. <laughs> okay, so I ended up today with four, 16, 18. So close to 20, give or take. I'm gonna brown the meatballs in olive oil again. This is another quarter cup or so. They will release some fat as they cook. Once the pan is hot and the oil is shimmering, go ahead, get this going. So this browning process, again, is like a little bit of a process. It's just time, it's not complicated. I have done this many different ways in the past. I'm doing the method that I think yields the best browning and the best flavor. If you were doing a big batch and cooking for like a crowd, get your best pal, set up a second skillet and go twice as fast. Two balls for the price of one. You know, again, it's a sphere, so it's like, <laughs> it doesn't have sides, but you wanna brown it on all sides. And they don't have to be super dark, but some nice browning, a little bit of a crust. They're brown on most of their exterior, and at that point, I'm gonna go ahead and just drop them straight into the marinara. The marinara's been going for about an hour. The marinara tastes great, it's got a head start, it's reduced a bit, so together they're gonna kind of finish. I don't cook the balls for that long in the sauce. I just want them to finish cooking in the sauce, but just so they'll absorb all of the delicious flavor of the sauce, but not dry out or get tough. Now that everybody is in the sauce, I'm going to make sure that I'm maintaining a simmer, completely cover the pot and let these go for 25 to 30 minutes, which should be plenty of time for them to finish cooking through and get really saucy and flavorful. Ain't no party like a ball party, am I right? Especially balls that have been simmering for approximately half an hour. Ooh, oh, the meat steam facial. I mean, is there anything more luxurious? <laughs> Definitely a few different ways that you can serve these. You could choose to make a big pot of pasta and mix the pasta in with the sauce and the balls. You could have meatballs as an appetizer, which is kind of the vibe that I am bringing today. So you wanna serve them with like a good amount of sauce. Gorgeous and fabulous. So many ways to enjoy balls. So the way I'm gonna have them is with extra sauce, a nice sprinkle sprinkle of parm, a little bit of bread for dips, Check out our marinara, get acquainted. Mm. If the sauce is good, the meatballs are good. If the meatballs are good, the sauce is good. Mm -hmm. So you can see different textures for everything that's in there. It's not like one packed together, single vibe. These are the best meatballs I ever made. They have an insane amount of flavor. They're juicy as hell, almost like the way a burger is juicy. They don't taste greasy. They're grown up, sophisticated balls. Great news for you guys is like, you don't have to go through all those haphazard expression of ballism. You can just start here at my height. I'm proud of myself and I'm really ecstatic for all of us. I'm even happy for the balls. <laughs> Great job, balls.